Only 3% of those who view our videos are subscribed. So please consider subscribing to help us reach 500 subscribers. Thank you. Now to the video. Have you ever wondered where the universe came from? How did everything, the stars, the planets, life itself come to be? The truth is, no one knows for sure. Scientists have theories and religions have creation stories, but there's still a lot of mystery around the ultimate question. That mystery has led us to some pretty wild conspiracy theories over the years. Imagine if everything we see and experience is just a hyper-realistic video game and we're all characters being controlled by super advanced aliens. Or well, what if extraterrestrials visited Earth thousands of years ago and gave humans the secrets of civilization? Or some all-powerful intelligent designer meticulously crafted the universe, leaving hidden clues for us to discover its handiwork. Now, I know you're probably thinking crazy, right? But you might be surprised how many people believe this or at least find it fascinating to think about. There is something deeply compelling about the notion that reality isn't quite what it seems on the surface, that hidden truth and conspiracies are waiting to be uncovered. Of course, extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence, but I also believe the absence of evidence is not evidence of absence either. But we do have to be careful about spreading misinformation and buying into the theories that don't hold up to scrutiny. At the same time, exploring these ideas, even through speculation and fiction, can fire up your imagination and get us thinking about the deep questions in new ways. Going down these philosophical rabbit holes can be a real trip if we see the difference between fact and fantasy. This video will explore some of the most famous and bizarre conspiracy theories about the universe's origins. We'll start with the idea that everything's a simulation, which is really hot in Silicon Valley today. And then we'll go old school with the ancient astronaut theory, the notion that aliens helped build the pyramids and other wonders of the ancient world. Lastly, we'll finish off with intelligent design and the fierce debates it sparked about science and religion. There's a lot to unpack here, so let's jump in and start pulling back those cosmic layers. Picture yourself playing an ultra-realistic video game. It looks and feels so natural that you forget it's a game. The characters act like they have minds of their own. The world is vast and detailed. Now imagine that game is your reality and you're one of the characters going about your pixelated life unaware that you only exist in lines of code. Does it sound like the Matrix? Well, that's a simulation hypothesis. The idea that what we perceive as reality is a giant computer program created by some highly advanced civilization. Everything we see boils down to data and algorithms running on a souped up alien supercomputer. Now I know this sounds more like a sci-fi plot than a theory. Still, some well-known and respected people think it could be true, or we need to at least consider the possibility. The simulation argument was first put forward by Nick Bostrom, a philosopher at Oxford University in a 2003 paper. Bostrom argues that if you believe civilizations can reach a post-human stage with vast amounts of computing power and be interested in running ancestor simulations of their origins, then we're probably in assimilation. He claims that at least one of three things must be true. Either humans go extinct before reaching a post-human stage, post-humans have no interest in running ancestor assimilations, or we're almost certainly living in assimilation right now. However you slice it, it's quite unsettled. Bostrom's argument is abstract, but others have run with the simulation idea in a big way. Tech billionaires like Elon Musk have suggested that we're in a simulation. At a 2016 conference, Musk stated, there is a one in a billion chance we're in a base reality. His primary reasoning is that video game technology is advancing so quickly that games will soon be indistinct from reality. So some future civilization, maybe even humans ourselves, will run lifelike ancestor simulation at some point. Looking at the stats, any individual is likely to live within one of those countless simulations than in one base reality. Of course, extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. And that's where the simulation hypothesis gets a little wacky. Some believers point to a supposed glitch in the matrix as proof that we live in a simulated reality. Things like deja vu and weird coincidences, or even the universe's mysteriously accelerating expansion, 
could be our advanced descendants meddling with the simulation's physics engine. Hell, there are some Reddit threads full of people sharing their glitch stories, so check it out after this video. But when you step back, it's pretty thin. There needs to be concrete proof of the simulation argument, and it needs to be clarified that the hypothesis is falsifiable, which means it could be tested through observation and experiment. After all, if the simulators are so powerful, they could erase any trace of their existence. Critics argue the simulation idea is essentially unfalsifiable pseudoscience dressed up in fancy philosophical language. You find some serious issues when you dig into the argument's assumptions. For example, how could a vast simulation be built or sustained with zillions of particles interacting across billions of light years. The scale is enormous. Maybe the simulators have optimized the universe so much of it isn't rendered in fine detail until we observe it directly, which could explain some of the weirdness of quantum mechanics. But still, will only some of those planets and galaxies be see-through telescopes? Even if they're low resolution, take up a large amount of active processing power? And if glitches and hacks in the code are possible, like in the matrix. Where would they be in the laws of physics? Why don't we see more blatant examples? There's also the question of how we would treat simulated realities if we created them. The philosopher David Chalmers argues it would be unethical to run simulations and let simulated beings suffer. So if we're in a simulation, it's a nice one where simulators are concerned about our well-being. But that seems like wishful thinking. And into the weirdness. Some simulation proponents have argued that if there are nested layers of simulations, virtual worlds within virtual worlds, then we're almost guaranteed to be in one. The more layers you have, the more likely we're in a simulation. And not the basement level of reality, which is trippy. The simulation argument is a fun thought experiment. It raises profound questions about the nature of reality, human technological potential, and existential risk, but it's highly speculative. There is no evidence we're living in a simulation, and the idea has some serious holes when examined closely. That said, it is a culturally resonant idea. The Matrix was a massively influential film, and characters discovering their reality is simulated is now a well-worn trope in science fiction. There are also more optimistic perspectives on simulation theory in fiction, like in the novels Fall or Dodge and Hell and the Metamorphosis of Prime Intellect, which imagine kind-hearted post-humans running ancestral sins for philosophical research or giving people an afterlife in a VR. So even if the simulation argument doesn't hold up to science or philosophy, it captures the imagination. Regardless of its ultimate truth value, the simulation hypothesis has gotten many people thinking more deeply about the nature of reality and our place in the universe. It's a fun mental exercise to entertain the idea, even if we can't prove it one way or another. And hey, if we are in a simulation, let's hope the programmers are friendly and they coded in some cheat codes for us to discover. Now let's rewind the clock way back thousands of years ago to the dawn of civilization. Humans are building their first city, pyramids pierce the sky, and great wonders emerge across the globe. Today we look at these ancient structures and think, hmm, how did they manage that with just simple tools? According to the ancient astronaut theory, they had some help from above, and I'm not talking about gods, I'm talking about non-human intelligence. The idea is that extraterrestrials visited Earth in the old times and gave human knowledge technology, construction, agriculture, you name it. That's how we made such a sudden leap and constructed impressive monuments. All our religions and myths are just fuzzy memories of these alien encounters stretched and distorted over millennia of oral tradition. The concept was first promoted in the late 1960s by a Swiss author, Eric von Daniken. His book, Chariots of the Gods, lays the groundwork for the ancient astronaut theory. Von Daniken points to all sorts of alleged evidence that we had extraterrestrial visitors, not just in the distant past, but throughout human history. From the Nazca lines in Peru, which has giant designs etched into the desert that can only be seen from above, to the pyramids in Egypt, to the famous Moai statues on Easter Island. He argued there's no way ancient humans built this stuff on their own with modern tools or machinery. They had to have had an advanced alien civilization helping them out. And it's not just the monuments themselves, but little details like carvings and artwork and seen to show spacemen or flying machines. There are actually prehistoric cave paintings that Von Daniken claims to pit figures with helmets, made in carvings that look sort of like a guy in a rocket ship. Biblical stories like Ezekiel's will within a will sound suspiciously like UFO sightings. The list goes on and on and on. 
Von Dallin can even argue ancient myths about gods made up with humans could be based on actual events. <laughs> Alien visitors getting busy with the local. Demigod heroes like Hurricane? Maybe the offspring of extraterrestrial romances. It's a pretty wild idea, I know, but that's what we know. To put it mildly, none of this is conclusive evidence of alien contact. Mainstream experts and historians say Von Daniken is reading too much into things. The Nazca lines, they were probably ceremonial designs related to the Nazca people's spiritual belief. The pyramids, they were built with sophisticated engineering techniques, but no extraterrestrial magic was required. Many of Von Daniken's specific claims have allegedly been debunked over the years. For example, like the whole rocket man carving. Skeptics states that it's almost certain certainly just a Mayan king wearing an ornate headdress. It's not a space helmet. Skeptics also suggest that when you look into it, a lot of these ancient aliens' ideas come from a pretty racist place, saying that people of color couldn't possibly have made these incredible structures without help from advanced beings. However, I do admit, there is an ugly history there of denying the achievements of non-white cultures. But despite all the logical leaps and problematic assumptions, the idea that aliens visited us in the past and shaped human history has taken off in popular culture. It's bigger than Von Daniken now. There are tons of books about it, countless History Channel specials, Remember Asian Aliens, and many fictional stories that play with the concept. It's entered the public imagination. And I get the appeal. It's fun to imagine these ancient mysteries have an extraordinary otherworldly aspect Nation. If you stare at the Moai statues long enough, they look alien. With oversized heads and eyeless faces, thinking we might not be alone, that we could have these incredible cosmic origins, there is something hopeful and exciting there. However, skeptics suggest that the evidence doesn't support it. If aliens have visited Earth before, who knows? According to deniers, ancient astronaut theory has taken some giant leaps beyond the facts. Most serious scholars agree that humans were capable of a remarkable construction and artistic feats back in the day. That said, the idea has inspired a lot of really cool science fiction over the years. From Arthur C. Clarke's novel, Childhood's End, to the Predator movies, to the Assassin's Creed video game series, ancient aliens have become a well-worn figure that can make for gripping stories. The theory for a moment is that it's not implausible that aliens could have visited Earth at some point. The universe is vast with trillions of stars and planets. Suppose intelligent life evolved elsewhere and advanced spacefaring technology was developed. In that case, they might have swum by to check out the local primitives. There could even be ways to test the ancient astronaut idea more rigorously. If we found a 10,000 year old tomb with the remains of a non-human creature inside, or if SETI picked up an alien signal that referenced visiting Earth in a distant past, that would be pretty compelling evidence, don't you think? Then, the only question would be, would they actually tell the public about it? But that's ne neither here nor there. With our current information, the consensus is that ancient humans achieved incredible things independently with no ET required. While entertaining, the old astronaut theory needs complex data taken seriously as a scientific hypothesis. But hey, you never know where those NASA rovers might dig up. Now, the simulation theory and ancient astronaut stuff are pretty fringe, but our last big conspiracy theory about the universe's origins, intelligent design, has seriously impacted education, politics, and religion over the past few decades. It's a heavy hitter. The basic idea behind intelligent design is that life is too complex to have evolved by blind, unguided natural processes. When you look at the intricate structures inside a cell or the staggering diversity of species on Earth, you can't help but see a mark of an intelligent creator. Some higher powers had to have been evolved in setting up the universe and seeding it with life. At first glance, this might not sound so different from garden variety creationism, which is the religious view that God created the cosmos as the described in the Bible or other scripture. However, intelligent design advocates have tried hard to present their scientific alternative to evolution by natural selection. They argue that the incredible complexity of biological systems is solid evidence of a deliberate design. 
not just an article of faith. The modern intelligent design movement got going in the 1990s with the founding of the Discovery Institute, a think tank in Seattle that's all about challenging neo-Darwinian evolution. Some key players were guys like Michael Behe, a biochemist who argued that cellular structures like flagella are irreducibly complex, meaning they're too put together to have evolved piece by piece through natural selection. Another big name in intelligent design circles is William Dembski, who came up with the idea of specified complexity that states that biological features are so unlikely to have arisen by chance, they must be the product of an intelligent agent. He even created mathematical formulas that supposedly prove organic structures are designed. Now, mainstream biologists have yet to be impressed by these arguments. They say Behe and company need to understand how evolution works. Very complex features can evolve gradually through slight modifications, even if it seems complicated to imagine all the immediate stuff. And they point out that intelligent design proponents spend most of their time poking holes in evolution rather than providing positive evidence for their view. Critics argue that intelligent design is just rebranded creationism in a lab coat. Instead of openly pushing a religious agenda, it presents itself as a secular science. But at the end of the day, it's still a god of the gaps arguments, trying to sneak the supernatural in through the back door. In a 2005 landmark case, Kitts Miller versus Dover, a group of parents sued a Pennsylvania school district for promoting intelligent design in biology class. The judge ruled that intelligent design is not science but a religious view and teaching it as an alternative to evolution is unconstitutional. That case didn't settle the debate however. Gallup polls have found that around 40% of Americans believe humans were created in their present form by God within the last 10,000 years. Many people are sympathetic to the idea that the incredible design of life points to a creator even if they're fuzzy on the details. Intelligent design has had an impact. It shaped public opinion and sparked big fights about science education, but within the scientific community, it's still seen as pseudoscience at best, a sneaky way to disguise religious beliefs as empirical claims. There are still some substantial questions for intelligent design advocates. For example, they often talk about an intelligent designer, but they're vague about who or what that designer is. Is it the Christian God, alien scientist, a computer programmer running a simulation? It needs to be clarified. And if life was designed rather than evolved, what exactly was the design process? Did the designer front load the universe with the correct initial conditions for life to develop? Or were they constantly tinkering behind the scenes like a cosmic micromanager? The creator wouldn't do the most excellent job if the universe wasn't designed for life. The vast majority of the cosmos is a cold, lifeless vacuum, and the Earth spent billions of years as a microbial sludge world before complex creatures emerged, hardly a perfectly tuned biosphere. Intelligent design is an interesting philosophical perspective, but has yet to become a rigorous scientific alternative to evolutionary biology. Even if there are still open questions about how life originated and diversified, most working biologists don't see compelling reasons to evoke a designer. The evidence for evolution is overwhelming at this point. However, intelligent design remains popular with the public and keeps popping up in school curriculum. Hence, it's important to modern society's conversation about science and religion. Even if it's not taken seriously by professional scientists, it's had a cultural impact. One area where intelligent design has gained more traction recently is in the context of cosmology and the anthropic principle. Some physicists have argued that the universe's fundamental constants seem finely tuned to allow for the emergence of stars, planets, and life as we know it. Tweak the strength of gravity or the mass of an electron just a bit and you would get a cosmos where atoms never form and biology is impossible. So is our universe deliberately calibrated for life or is it a lucky roll of the cosmic dice? Intelligent design proponents like William Dipsky has seized on the cosmic fine tuning as evidence of a designer. Still, there are other possible explanations like the idea that our universe is just one of countless bubble universes in an infinite multiverse. So we shouldn't be surprised to find ourselves in one where the constants are just suitable for life. These are deep, fascinating questions, but we have to be careful about framing arguments in terms of science versus religion, pitting intelligent design against atheistic evolution. The philosophical debate over whether the universe shows signs of purpose and intelligence is separate from the scientific project of studying how life originated and changed over time. Mixing them up too much leads to modal thinking on both sides. There's room for a diversity of worldviews here. Science is a potent tool for understanding nature, but it can only answer some questions about 
about meaning, morality, and metaphysics. I respect if someone finds their sense of purpose in the idea that a loving God designed the universe, but we can't ignore or deny scientific evidence because it challenges our beliefs. Critical thinking and intellectual humility are essential. At the same time, secular scientists and philosophers sometimes underestimate the emotional power of religious narratives and the yearning people have to feel like their existence is significant. Purely materialist accounts of reality can feel bleak and unsatisfying, even if they had a facts on their side. We're storytelling creatures desperate to find larger narratives to latch onto. While I don't find intelligent design as convincing, I understand why it strikes a chord with many people. The idea that we're here for a reason, that some type of intelligence is watching over us, that we're a part of a grand cosmic plan, those are appealing notions, even if their evidence is shaky at best. Ultimately, we can acknowledge the psychological and cultural impact of ideas like intelligent design without treating them as serious scientific proposals. We can also respect people's personal beliefs and emotional needs while still upholding the core principles of skeptical inquiry and empirical testing. It's a tricky balance, but an important one. There are three different wild theories about the universe's origins. We've covered the idea that reality is a computer simulation cooked up by hyper-advanced alien civilizations. We discussed the theory that extraterrestrials visited Earth in the ancient past and helped humans build the pyramids and other wonders. We unpacked the intelligent design movement, which claims life is so complex it must be the handiwork of a cosmic creator. At first glance, these theories have little in common. I mean, alien abductions in the past, reality as a video game, and supernatural biological engineering, that's a weird mix of ideas. But when you dig deeper, you start to see some patterns. In their own ways, these theories give existence a deeper meaning and purpose. Suppose we're in a simulation, uplifted by aliens, or designed by God. In that case, humanity seems unique and significant in a grand scheme. Something is appealing about the idea that we're not random accidents of physics and evolution, and that we might have a role to play in some larger cosmic drama. These theories also tend to evolve certain distrust of mainstream institutions and conventional wisdom. Proponents often see themselves as truth-tellers, unafraid to challenge the official narratives and reveal hidden realities lurking beneath the surface. There is an I want to believe factor at work, a sense that the universe is weirder and more wonderful than that boring old materialist want to admit. To be explicit, extraordinary claims need extraordinary evidence to back them up. The proof of these particular theories is thin at the moment. Mainstream scientists have good reasons for skepticism about simulation theory, ancient aliens, and intelligent design. They see these ideas as speculative at best and pseudoscientific at worst. We also must be careful about spreading misinformation and conspiracy theory, especially in an age where social media can rapidly amplify fringe belief. But even if these origin stories don't hold up under a pure scrutiny, I don't think we should dismiss them entirely. Strangely, they're getting at something real and relatable in a human experience. The yearning for transcendent purpose, the desire to enchant and re-enchant the universe with meaning. People latch onto these extraordinary theories for a reason. They resonate with our cosmic loneliness, eventual confusion, and hunger for myths, monsters, and mind-bending possibilities. They remind us that for all of our scientific progress, there's still so much we need to understand about the nature of reality and consciousness. So while we need to be grounded in reason and evidence, we shouldn't completely close ourselves off to wonder and imagination either. It's possible to strike a balance, to engage playfully with far out metaphysical questions without falling for every paranormal pitch or conspiracy theory. The simulation argument may be wrong, but thinking about it can still juice our brain circuits in exciting ways. Maybe ancient aliens never visit Pumbu Pumbu, but it's still fun to ponder what a galactic civilization might be like. Perhaps God did and design the universe, but reflecting on our improbable existence can still fill us with spiritual awe. At the end of the day, we're all just humans trying to make sense of our crazy cosmos and our own flickering lives. While science is indispensable for that sense-making project, it doesn't have to be the only lens we look through. Art, philosophy, 
fiction, spirituality, and speculation can enrich our experience and expand our perspectives as long as we don't treat wild conjectures as proven facts. The universe is a prominent, weird, mysterious place. We figured out a lot through rigorous observation and testing, but so much remains unknown, maybe even unknowable. It's okay to embrace that mystery sometimes, to wade out the cosmic ocean of woo-woo and see what wonders we can dream up. So simulation dwellers, psychonauts, ancient astronaut theories, and armchair intelligent design I see you. In a hyper-rational age, we could all use more myth and magic in our mental lives. Let's keep speculating wildly while still respecting the evidence. It's a bit tent, after all. And who knows? Those glitches you keep noticing in the space-time matrix aren't flutes. The mothership may come back for us soon. I'm not saying it's alien. There's something to chew on. The truth is out there, people. Let's keep searching for it with our eyes and minds wide open. May the cosmic ties be ever in your favor. Stay courage, my friends. This is Access Unknown. Keep searching for the unknown. Until next time, like, comment, and subscribe for more videos. And I thank you for your support. I love y'all. Peace.